Hi there, Waltoners. I'm Jack, and this is DSMY Newscast. And look, I want to level with you. As you see, this is actually my seventh consecutive, you know, this kind of video, the guide to Disney in the year ahead, talking all about, you know, what we've got to look forward to and what we can expect from the Walt Disney Company in the upcoming year. And this has actually become a kind of tradition on this channel. We all get pumped up and excited and geared up for what's to come from Disney in the next year. But this video in particular has been a lot harder to put together. And it's for the reason being that there just isn't as much going on in 2024 compared to previous jam-packed schedules and jam-packed years for the Walt Disney Company, such as like 2018, 2019, or even the post-pandemic years of 2021 and 2022. And then also, there's this kind of sheer vagueness and unpredictability surrounding an awful lot of Disney's projects at the moment. And so all of this makes it a lot harder to do this in a traditional chronological order like I usually would. So instead, I'm gonna do this as a kind of hierarchy of importance of what you care about, what I care about, and what we're interested in. So instead, let's do it that way and do it in upcoming park projects and then talk about D23 Expo because this is going to be critical. D23 Expo in 2024 is a critical turning point, good or bad, for the Walt Disney Company. You know, they talk all about the $60 billion investment that they're making in the parks over the next 10 years. Well, it's put up or shut up time at D23 Expo in 2024. We need to see some you know, new announcements made that are going to reinvigorate the fan base. And then we're going to talk about you know, the upcoming movie release schedule for 2024 and then some important dates on the Disney calendar which will, for better or worse, shape Disney's future. So with that being said, let's begin by talking about what's definitely coming to the Disney parks in 2024 and what is easily the biggest thing that will happen within the Disney parks next year is the opening of Tiana's Bayou Adventure at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And according to the attraction description, this is going to see guests go down the bayou with Princess Tiana, Prince Naveen and Louis the Alligator, searching for a very special ingredient, as they're making last minute preparations for a one of a kind Mardi Gras celebration that Tiana is throwing for all of the people of New Orleans. And within this reimagining of the former Splash Mountain attraction, Imagineering is said to be including dozens of all new animatronic figures, many of which will be using the latest technological advancements in animatronics to bring Lewis, Naveen, Tiana and Mama Odie to life. And in addition to this, the attraction will also feature both original music and also music from the 2009 Princess and the Frog animated movie, which is obviously inspiring this attraction. And look, to be honest here, I wish there was a lot more that we could talk about on this topic but besides the occasional parks blog post talking about you know the layered backstory or the research that's going into the attraction we haven't heard much more about all of the details of this attraction that we can really disclose right now or talk about right now and I would love to see a glimpse at this latest technological advancements in audio animatronic technology in its finished form. I'd love to see that. I'd love to get a preview of the original music for the attraction or even just get more concept art for the different show scenes that will help us understand what the storyline's about. But without that, um, you know, we don't have much more to go on. But what I will say is judging by the latest construction images that show the exterior transformation of the building, I am beginning to get a lot more optimistic about seeing just how this new attraction is going to stack up against its predecessor attraction, Splash Mountain, that it's now replacing. As despite all of the polarization surrounding the entirety of this project over the past few years, I actually do think Imagineering has a fairly good chance here of delivering something which will be just as equally enjoyable as the original attraction. And then in terms of the opening day, it was stated as being late 2024, but recently that's moved to like a vague 2024 timeline instead. So I think this is providing Disney a bit of flexibility here, so therefore we can maybe open one sooner than the other. And uh, judging by the latest construction activity, I would say that there's a good chance that the Walt Disney World version could open even as soon as summer of 2024, and then see the Disneyland version one open maybe in fall of 2024 or later on in 2024 instead, just to stagger the opening a little bit. But then let's move on to another attraction update, which has also received a very impassioned response from fans over the past few years. 
and that's what's going to be happening to the Country Bear Jamboree. As the plans were first revealed at Destination D23 in September of 2023, outline a dramatic update that will see the eclectic gang of bears performing classics from the Disney songbook in bluegrass, rockabilly and pop country styles that will be reminiscent of those found at the Grand Old Opry in Nashville, Tennessee. And this I'm actually very excited to see because I think this is a great way to keep the country bears around but update the attraction for a modern audience and a more casual audience as obviously there are many country bear jamboree fans who love those songs in the attraction at the moment. I think by opening it up to more Disney songs it will widen the appeal of this opening day attraction for more people to come and enjoy it. So it says it's opening in 2024 so I'm expecting the downtime to happen fairly early on in 2024 if they're looking for a quick turnaround time to have it open by the end of 2024 as this is going to be quite a substantial update to you know revamping and refurbishing all the animatronic figures and programming the new show so expect this for 2024 as well then in terms of the international parks over at tokyo disney resort they're going to be opening fantasy springs on june 6th 2024 and this is sure to be extremely impressive as the Japanese Imagineers and the Oriental Land Company have become known for their incredible artistry, theming and attention to detail with all of their Tokyo Disney projects in recent years and encompassed within this 2.1 billion dollar 34 acre expansion is going to be three mini lands with one themed to the kingdom of Corona from Tangled which will feature a boat ride called Rapunzel's Lantern Festival. Another land that will be featured within the expansion is the kingdom of Arendelle from Frozen complete with its own kind of version of Frozen Ever After as a boat ride which will be around six minutes long and then lastly there will also be Neverland from Peter Pan. That will be a 3D simulator based ride system along with a simple flat ride that will be themed Tinkerbell and Pixie Hollow. And even though many of us won't be able to make it the trip on out to Tokyo to go and experience this in real life, it's definitely going to be something that you should be looking out for on social media and on YouTube because based upon Tokyo Disney's track record it's going to be amazing. And then also something that's been confirmed for 2024 is that new adventures are going to be coming to Star Tours at Disneyland, Walt Disney World and Disneyland Paris that will be featuring the likes of Ahsoka Tano. So we'll be getting those at all three resorts at roughly around spring of 2024 for that update. Then moving away from the Disney parks to Disney Cruise Line, by the end of 2024, December 21st, 2024 to be exact, the Disney Treasure, the sixth ship, in the Disney Cruise Line fleet will also be setting sail for the first time. And although this is going to be in the same class as the Disney Wish ship, this Disney treasure ship from a Disney Park fans perspective, I'm actually a lot more interested to see as it's going to have the Haunted Mansion Parlor Bar on board, which I'm very interested to see how that's thematically done, as I would also love to see that get brought to Magic Kingdom at some point, either in terms of a Haunted Mansion Bar, Haunted Mansion Restaurant in the Magic Kingdom. I think that would be fantastic and this could be a precursor to that kind of thing come to the Disney parks at some point in the future as well. We've also got the Periscope Pub which is inspired by the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea attraction, the Skipper Society which will be on board which will be inspired by the Jungle Cruise and then also in terms of new restaurants on board the ship there's going to be Plaza de Coco restaurant which um, I'm a massive fan of the Coco movie from 2017 and I don't think it gets nearly enough representation within the Disney parks that it should for the fantastic music and great story that it's told. So to see this on board the Disney Treasure, I'm very excited to see how that comes to be and to finally see Coco get some representation, whether it be in the Disney Cruise Lines or in the Disney Parks. And then the other thing that's definitely scheduled for 2024, which is actually more of an operational logistical kind of change, but nevertheless will make a big difference to a lot of guests, and that is on January 9th, date-based tickets will no longer need to have a park pass tied to the date-based ticket and also annual pass holders will get good to go days which will mean that they won't need park passes either which I'm very excited about because hopefully this is just another nail in the coffin of the very annoying park pass reservation system which personally 
I found to be a bit redundant over the past few years and it's annoyed me in recent years knowing that I can't get into the park on certain days even though I know the capacity back in 2019 would have usually allowed me going into that park and so hopefully this is just one step closer to saying you know goodbye to the park pass reservation system and then also in 2024 despite it being near impossible for Disney to put the genie back in the bottle when it comes to genie plus they have announced that changes are coming to genie plus to hopefully simplify the uh, system and make it easier to use which i think should be a positive change for most people especially if they kind of you know make it easier to get genie plus on certain days and just the operation of the app itself but then we come to some park projects which might happen in 2024 but we can't say for definite as you see at destination d23 it was announced that chevrolet will be revamping test track with a major update that will draw inspiration and pay tribute to the original opening day attraction world of motion and i think this is one of these projects which no one expected to see coming but we're all excited about as uh, you know when these sponsors take on these attractions they have to update them on a on a you know roughly decade long basis this is one of these cases where obviously this won't be closed and open within 2024 but i do think there's a high possibility that we will see the extended downtime begin in 2024 at some point throughout the year for this refurb so the refurb will probably last around you know two years to make the changes to the attraction to pay tribute to world emotion but be on the lookout during 2024 for a you know last chance to ride test track in its current form if you're a big fan of the way it is right now and in that same vein uh, be on the lookout for tough to be a bug as well because tough to be a bug over at uh, the tree of life in animal kingdom it was announced that that will be getting a new zootopia show to replace that previous show which means that there's a high possibility that tough to be a bug is going to close for good in 2024 which is especially sad because it's the last version of this show in the entire world with the previous version over in California Adventure going away when Avengers Campus replaced it. So if you're a big fan of A Bug's Life or Tough to Be a Bug, be sure to be on the lookout for seeing a you know last chance to experience that attraction in 2024 as well. And then on top of all of this, there's also going to be a pirate-themed lounge that's currently in the works that will likely be the first standalone bar in the Magic Kingdom. And this is probably going to be located in the former Pirates League location that's uh, nestled between the entrance of Pirates of the Caribbean and then the exit gift shop. And despite not having any more info regarding the date of when this will happen, I think that work could begin in 2024 and possibly open later that year, depending on how soon the project does get started. But then we come to August of 2024 and to be precise August 9th to August 11th as this is when D23 Expo is going to take place and obviously this is going to be in the Anaheim Convention Center but this year it's also going to have the special evening presentation panels at the Honda Center and I think this is a real big moment for the Disney fan base, the Disney company as it's a kind of put up or shut up moment and they need to unveil loads of new projects that will reinvigorate the fan base uh, for the next few years and I mean you know new prop art projects new attraction announcements new land announcements and even talking about you know updating the movie schedule slate to start building bigger stories and let people know what's coming and I really can't underline just how much of a critical point in time i think this d23 expo is going to be as uh, at the moment i think there's a growing sense of apathy within the disney fan base and depending on how d23 expo goes whether they deliver in a big way or they fall short i think it's going to set disney on a different path over the next decade so uh we do a lot of talk about the 60 billion dollar investment it's about time we see that investment get laid out for the next 10 years and start talking about long-term plans instead of this blue sky nonsense you know this dreaming on stage we need to start seeing real projects and shovels on the ground and construction begin on new projects to get the fan base excited once again and then let's move on to disney movies as for 2024 much like the park announcements the actual schedule is relatively sparse compared to previous years 
Uh, and that's obviously a direct result of the uh, writers and actors strikes, you know, not being resolved sooner by the studios and them going on for so long, which means that a lot of things have been pushed back and delayed and stuff like that. But really, in many ways, there's only three big releases, the way I see it, for Disney in 2024 that Disney really need to succeed. And that is Inside Out 2, Deadpool 3, and the Lion King Mufasa prequel that will be released at Christmas. But starting with Pixar's Inside Out 2, which is going to be released on June 14th, 2024. This movie is set to pick up shortly after the previous film, with Riley continuing to grow up. The five emotions of joy, sadness, anger, fear and disgust have to grapple with sharing their headquarters with four new emotions, anxiety, embarrassment, envy and a new as they all try to help navigate Riley through what are often the troublesome, confusing, and complicated teenage years. And I actually think this is going to be a huge win for Pixar. And trust me, Pixar's been in need of a big box office hit in recent years, as already the teaser trailer has broken Disney records, dethroning Frozen 2 as the most watched trailer in Disney history, with Inside Out 2's teaser trailer amassing an astonishing 157 million views in the first 24 hours across all social media platforms. Then the next big movie that Disney is banking on doing some stellar business at the box office for them is Deadpool 3 which arrives in theatres on July 26th, 2024. And this will see the return of the R-rated antics and funny foul-mouthed musings of Ryan Reynolds as he reprises the titular role. And although plot details are being kept closely under wraps, we do know that this will see Hugh Jackman return as Wolverine to cross paths with Deadpool as they team up to defeat a common enemy. And it's also been heavily rumoured that this movie might even see singer-songwriter superstar Taylor Swift join the MCU in a special cameo appearance as the character Dazzler, which seems very likely given Swift's close relationship with Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively. And then for the end of the year, Disney has decided to push back the sequel, or kind of prequel, to the 2019 version of The Lion King, Mufasa, The Lion King, to a December 20th, 2024 release, instead of the original opening in summer that it had been slated for before. And although we don't have much in the way of plot details, what we do know is from the synopsis, this will see Rafiki telling Simba's daughter Kiara of the story of her grandfather, and his rise to become one of the greatest kings that the Pride Lands has ever known. Then in other movie news, there's a untitled Disney animated movie that is scheduled for release on November 27th, you know, the Thanksgiving weekend kind of, you know, opening release date. And then also throughout the year in terms of movies, 20th Century Studios will be releasing a few franchise plays as well, with a sequel to The Omen called The First Omen in April a sequel to Planet of the Apes called Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes in May, and an alien sequel called Romulus in August. And then to cap off this Guide to Disney video, in around March-April timeframe, uh, Disney's going to hold its annual shareholder meeting. And the reason why I'm leaving this till last is because uh, there's been an ongoing proxy fight. Uh, by Nelson Pouts and uh, Tryon Fund Management to try and get board seats on the Disney board. And uh, this is actually becoming quite an ugly matter uh, for Bob Iger and Disney. And um, it's all going to come to a head either in March or April at the annual shareholders meeting. And as of recently, Nelson Pouts has said that he wants a board seat and he's also nominating the previous CFO uh, of the Walt Disney Company from 2010 to 2015, Jay Rizzullo to the board as well. And I think this is actually a clever play by Nelson Pouts to nominate a previous employee of the Walt Disney Company alongside him because it increases his chances of trying to get that board seat by sweetening the deal in terms of a shareholder's eyes of having a Disney voice returning to the Disney Company. But nevertheless, uh, Pouts's whole attempt last year fell by the wayside when he tried to restore the magic but ended up restoring the dividends and so therefore, you know, Pouts you know, walked away. And now we've seen the stock price of a Disney company fall dramatically in the past year as a result of the writers and actors strike and stuff like that. And so now, you know, we're going to see Pounce make another attempt for trying to get a board seat. And I think the reason why Pounce is trying to get this board seat is because um, 
when the stock price does recover, he will be able to you know, claim some credit for the recovery of the stock price. But I also think that he's teaming up with Ike Perlmutter, who used to own Marvel and Iger fired. Um, and there's kind of a bit of a uh, vendetta or retribution at play here. And it's just going to get quite ugly. So I think we need to stay tuned to this one and watch what goes on. But at the moment, I think we're going to be gearing up for a big battle ahead of the Disney shareholders meeting. Maybe Iger might fix it all before then like he did last year or what I should say this year. But um, it's one to watch. And I think for better or worse, uh, it's going to have an impact on Disney's future and Disney's future succession plans and also Disney's future organizational structure and just the way they go about doing things. So that's very important as well. But anyway, with all of that being said for today, it's over to you for Walt Disney. I would like to know what are you most looking forward to in terms of the parks and movies in 2024? And just what's your overall opinion of Disney in 2024 and any other predictions that you have for the Walt Disney Company in the next year? And of course, if you've enjoyed this video for today, then give this video a massive thumbs up. Share this video with a friend who's also interested in Disney and check out the rest of the videos on this channel. And I'd also like to give a massive shout out to the official Waltoneer Club over on Patreon for helping support this channel for so long. And also the Waltoneer Gold members that you can see here right now on the screen. And a massive shout out to Waltoneer Diamond member Kyle Mahan as well. And with all that being said, I've been Jack. You've been you, and I'll see you real soon.